The last part of our lecture covers regions of the periodic table. In this slide is some workplace for independent notes, and I hope you'll write down this important information and also take a printed periodic table and identify the regions described here for future use in homework and other questions for different chapters. The shape of the periodic table is shown. It is organized by increasing atomic number, starting at the upper left corner and reading each row left to right. The rows are often called periods. The third and fifth periods are highlighted. The columns are called groups. Atoms within the same group tend to have similar properties and chemical reactivity. There are 18 columns in the periodic table. Some of these groups have specific names. The alkali metals are in column 1, from lithium to francium. These are reactive metals that typically form a plus 1 cation. Although in column 1, hydrogen is not part of this group, as it has different properties. Column 2 contains the alkaline earth metals. These reactive metals typically form a plus 2 cation. Column 17 has the halogens, which are reactive nonmetals that typically form a minus 1 anion. Column 18 is the noble gases, which are often non-reactive. The main group elements are composed of the first two and last six columns. The transition elements are composed of columns 3 through 12, and the two rows that are split off below the main body of the periodic table. Many students learn the properties of metals and nonmetals in middle school chemistry. For example, the metals are shiny solids, conduct electricity and heat, are malleable, and also ductile. These are shown in red to the left side of the periodic table. Nonmetals are gases or dull solids, do not conduct electricity or heat, and are brittle. These are shown in blue to the right of the periodic table. Metalloids are materials whose properties are in between those of metals and nonmetals. These two are grouped in the periodic table. The metalloids are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and astatine. Some periodic tables will also include polonium as the metalloids. Hydrogen is again unique, although it is most similar in properties to nonmetals. So now that you have your labeled periodic table, I hope that you can find the heaviest alkaline earth metal based upon the one that has the greatest molar mass. And I hope you'll be able to identify period 4 and figure out which atom is a nonmetal and the lightest nonmetal. So our current arrangement of the periodic table is in increasing atomic number going from left to right. As far as why some rows have 8 elements and others 18 elements, that will be covered soon in a future lecture. But for right now, let's look at the prototype of the periodic table that was generated in 1869 by Mendeley. He arranged the known elements at the time according to increasing approximate atomic mass. So at the time, the next known element after zinc was arsenic. However, at the time, Mendeley was also writing a book about the properties of different elements, and he noticed that while he was writing the arsenic chapter, that it seemed very similar to the phosphorus chapter. 
those two elements seem to have similar properties. So he realized that arsenic was perhaps more closely related to phosphorus, and he predicted the existence of gallium and germanium in advance of them being discovered. So by realizing phosphorus and arsenic have similar properties, he placed them within the same group in the periodic table. Today we arrange the periodic table according to increasing atomic number, but we still keep that same idea that atoms within the same column have very similar properties.